Hello friends, how does a fully automated McDonald's make you feel? Besides, you know, a, a fancy vending machine that can grill and deep fry at the same time as seen by this, you know, uh, this artist's great rendition. Uh, the idea of uh, a McDonald's full of robots conjures up a, a lot of sad emotions in, in many people. It's interesting because it probably is more emotional than the potential damage from automated driving. Uh, I'm certain, you know, on one end, franchise owners are delighted by this. Uh, I actually uh, know a Subway owner. Uh, it's basically, it's not a McDonald's, but they make uh, sandwiches in the U.S. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than a McDonald's. Uh, but they said that, that the, the toughest part of the job is employing people. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's a tight labor market right now. And uh, the, the tough part is finding somebody that's willing to work and onboard them as quickly as possible. You basically got to train them to make sandwiches as quick as possible because they're not going to stay long. Basically, they'll make sandwiches for two weeks, two months, six months, and then they're gone, guaranteed, right? The, after a few bad interactions with customers or in the case of McDonald's, if you got burned by the deep fryer too many times, you're saying this is not worth minimum wage. I'm out of here. And so you have to train them as quickly as possible to, you know, so that you can, you know, make this business profitable. I mean, they're, they're making a good, you know, I think they're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year on, on, on their subway venture. So it's not bad, but it's a lot of work. It's not, it's not about finding, uh, you know, a good look, uh, a good location or, you know, uh, working on, you know, better food. It's all about hiring people to make the damn sandwiches. Um, so, but on the other end of the spectrum, and more interestingly, in my opinion, is the is the uh, the sense that we're losing a cultural institution. It's it's, it's disappearing. It's kind of sad. Uh, sure, it's still here, right? But they're definitely trying to automate as much as they can. But in this case, you know, McDonald's is testing deep fryers and voice activated uh, drive throughs So it's definitely changing, and um, uh, it's just it's a shell of what it used to be. It's a cultural institution because in the U.S., this is where most people, uh, most teenagers, get their first job, and it's also an employer. Of, of last resort. If you're down on your luck, you know you'll, you used to know that you could always get a job at McDonald's. Well, maybe not anymore. So welcome to the Viral Mail Show. My name is Manuel Amunategui. Please sign up for my newsletter. It's right here in the middle of the page. Uh, you'll get early access to my material and deals on books and classes. This will be classified under channels and state of the industry where you see all my other videos on what's going on, my take on, on, on the industry and what's going on, what's funny or interesting. Uh, you know, s subscribe to the channel and give it some thumbs up. It's always appreciated. So the, the, the piece of American history was invented in the 40s. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Founder. It's a great story. It talks about uh, how these, the brothers uh, you know, created McDonald's and how they were working really hard at trying to, to, to basically create this choreography between uh, human and machine to make you know the, the process of, of making a fresh burger as quickly as possible and delivering as quickly as possible to, uh, to the customer. Uh, they actually coined the service was called Speedy Service System, and today it's known as a fast food uh, experience, which is ironic because it's continuing today to get better and more efficient, and now the, the, the part that they have to fix now is by it's, it's removing the human element. The human elements is what's slow and unpredictable they're kicking it out and they're going to be it's going to be even more uh, efficient as before so this is we, we know it's coming right it's right around the corner if you don't think about if you don't if you don't if you if you don't see this yet think about how we felt 30 years ago about the uh, independent bookstores and independent pharmacies mom and pop bodegas right 30 years ago it's like oh they'll still be around right no they're practically all gone now in the u.s right so this stuff is happening Automation and cutting costs is happening, and there's just no way of uh, around it. One commentator on one of these blogs was saying that uh, if they do automate, um, you know, all these all, all these businesses, uh, uh, they're going to basically uh, they, they they could destroy their main customer base. Uh, basically, the the teenagers and the low income uh, workers are the ones who not only get jobs there, but they also consume most of those products. You know, if if they can't you know if they can't work anymore, they don't, then who you know who, who's going to be left to buy the burgers and the fries, right? It's also not just low income. Uh, in Europe, actually, it's a curiosity. It's a slice of, of Americana. I don't want people to see, oh, you know, it's a way of traveling to another country without, you know, without the airfare. So uh, it's not always cheaper. It's actually in Europe, there's a lot of places that are cheaper than that, but people will pay a premium for the experience. So it's a novelty. People go there, check it out. And so is, uh, you know, um, you know, going to uh, an automated uh, a burger joint, right? You go see, you want to see the, uh, the, the, the robots making the burgers. It's a novelty. People will see that. You know what this reminds me of right it's a caterpillar I'm not kidding but it's a novelty but but that, that will pass too just like you know 
people are you know the novelty of the the barista serving coffee right we all want to see it it's about you know uh it's futuristic it's about human ingenuity but that will pass while well, we'll progress away from from that uh just like you know we don't I'm, I'm assuming maybe the first vending machines or the first atms people were like Ooh, look at this you know i'm gonna i'm gonna hang around this atm machine for a while well actually i don't know if we were hanging out by atm machines but anyways the novelty passes and now nobody hangs out by the atm machine that'd be creepy and you know people will call the police on you uh but um uh, I'm all for eliminating uh, mindless labor. We've uh, we've all had to do that at one point in our lives, right? It's tiring. It stops us from uh, reaching our real uh, creative and intellectual potential. So I, I agree there. I'm just kind of curious about how we're going to do that in the future. How is the middle class going to be able to, you know, uh, create income in this new future? It, it just gets me a, a bit worried. I mean, we're talking about people are talking about UBI, universal basic income, uh, or I mean, or will, will we be reduced to, you know, living, you know, the 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 Wally lifestyle, basically just kind of sitting down, uh, you know, eating and and you know, and gorging in, in cheap entertainment because that's all we can afford. That's all that's available. Uh. Thankfully, we're not quite there yet, and there's a lot. Uh, there's, we have enough time to try to, uh, uh, you know, train ourselves, those around us, uh, and our kids to kind of. Uh, uh, try to stay ahead of this uh it's critical to think about it as uh you know we're definitely at the, i think at the precipice of the uh, of the of the end of manual repetitive labor of all types whether white or blue manual or intellectual it's going to disappear right? a 2016 pew research uh, center survey the estates of american jobs found that 87 percent of workers believe it will be essential for them to get training and develop new job skills throughout their work life in order to keep up with changes in the workplace so uh you know this uh, you know i don't want to make this too long but let's talk about some some action items that we can all do um we need to talk about it more right so just like i'm making a movie on the back of you know mcdonald's being automated right i'm piggybacking on that as you know in, to talk about the larger thing so we need to talk about it more education needs to change there are some great schools out there there's a lambda school and there's a whole burton school which basically will pay you or waive the tuition while you're learning so if you want to train yourself into a, a, a new a new career especially in the high-tech career these are great ways of going especially when you don't have the money um we also need to you know make sure scale uh, uh, uh like uh, mass education MOOCs, uh making sure that it scales better that, that and, and it's it's respected by hiring entities and the two i recommend are you know coursera which i've taken plenty of classes and udacity as well especially udacity this is sebastian third a school where they really work they partner with 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 you know very powerful companies big companies and they are respected by these companies so you, you know you go through these programs you will be able to find work or you at least you'll get you know you'll be able to interview them be interviewed by those companies um and maybe the most critical, because these are always very high tech oriented, and the, the job of the future may not just it's not just going to be high tech. There'll also be jobs for you know human uh, human work where you got to interact with people, creative work. Um, and so it's critical that large corporations that have benefited from laborers, uh, you know, for, for for decades and decades, need to retrain uh, those workers or offer retraining possibilities. And and those who buy robots, maybe every time you buy a robot, you should be retraining two people into something completely different, or at the very least, how to run the robots. And um, Amazon does that re well. They have a um, what's called career choice, and anybody um, you know uh, after associates have been employed by Amazon for as little as one continuous year, the Amazon Career Choice program will prepay 95% of tuition and fees for associated to earn certificates and associate degrees in high demand occupations such as aircraft mechanics, computer aided design, machine tool technologies, medical lab technologies, uh, nursing, and many other fields. So I think a lot of companies need to do what Amazon's doing, and basically get be responsible and offer the choices right you can't force people to do them but at least if you offer it uh, that's good uh, and just like uh, one last thing it's a mindset right we need to get in the right mindset we need to think about what can we do um, you know, to survive these the, the, this waves of automation and also maybe are there ways for us to kind of work in unison in synergy with automation and ai uh, to become even better to become you know even more powerful so uh, you know think about the barista or the ch the chef of the restaurant uh, I am pretty sure, I'm gonna go back to this one picture of uh, the, the automated barista here, right? I, I love going to coffee shops, I love coffee. I can tell you, I'm not gonna hang out at a coffee shop that's run by a robot, right? That just feels like you're at a hospital, you feel like you're, you're in a factory. I want one where I see the barista as an artist, I like to hear the noise of the coffee machine, the grinding of the coffee, the people talking and relaxing, right? So there's some jobs 
that are not going to disappear, where we're going to want to have that that human feel, uh, the creative jobs, the jobs where you want other humans around you, where you got to think, where you got to be, uh, you know, uh, inventive, where you got to react to things. Those jobs will always be here. So it's also a mindset, you know. Uh, and and we, if we keep thinking about it, we not only can find ways of making sure that you know we we survive this stuff, but also we can even do better. We can you know become more powerful. So at the end of my shows, I like to you know kind of plug my books. I want to talk about uh, incomes creating income streams. This is something that I've done for a very long time, and I've really enjoyed it. Is doing classes on uh, Teachable on Udemy, and I still have some now. And it's a book, I kind of talk about how I do them, why I do them, where I get my topic ideas. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I highly recommend it. It's a great way uh, to do a semi-passive uh, side, uh, you know, side business. Uh, and, you know, it's a lot of work up front and then it's more just, you know, maintenance. And it's a great way of kind of, you know, uh, freeing up your time to think about other things. Uh, you can find my books, other books on Amazon. Simply put my first and last name in Amazon and in the search bar and you'll find my books. And this is the one I'm talking about. Create income streams with online classes, uh, design, class, uh, design classes that generate long-term uh, revenue. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please.